for the cup. After a two and a half month hiatus, the 108th edition of the Lamar on US Open Cup is back and it is semi-final day. 99 teams started, four remain. And it's FC Cincinnati hosting Inter Miami from TQL Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. Delighted to have you with us this evening alongside the ex-German pro, Devin Kerr. I'm Joe Malpa. And Devin, these teams could not have taken more different roads to get here. Both recent expansion teams in MLS since he came in in 2019, Inter Miami in 2020, since he tasted a semifinal back in 2017 here in Open Cup as a USL team, and now they're back and they're facing off against Leo Messi and Inter Miami. This team had 14 domestic wins through MLS in their first three seasons. Well, guess what? They've already got 15 in that season this year in 2023, but they've been consistent all season long. Coming in, they said, we have a vision. We want to win as many trophies as possible. That's a stark difference than what you saw about 24 months ago. They've been good almost the entirety of the way in all competitions. They've been almost unbeatable at home in the last 18 months. Just one loss through the last 30 games. And they believe that tonight is the night that the Lionel Messi train stops. So let's go to them now. Inter Miami. This is a very different conversation we're having about this team compared to what was going on one month ago. The outro of certain players, the influx of, yes, Lionel Messi, but Sergio Busquets that comes into the lineup. Of course, they get John Mota back. There's a precursor for the midfield. This team has struggled through open cup play, and yet, all bets are off right now. None of that matters because these guys know it's just an opportunity for silverware which is just 90 minutes to get to that chance, and that's all they care about right here and now. Players gathering in the tunnel, and before they take the field, Devin, I have one question for you. Every step of the way, it seems like the difficulty has risen for Inter Miami. They've gone at Philly, they've gone at Dallas, they've gone at Nashville in the League's Cup Final. Is this their most difficult test since Messi and friends have joined? 100%, and, and with all due respect to the Philadelphia Union, what they experience in League's Cup, this is a different animal. This is a stadium and a culture that have not seen anything but success in this calendar year. All they know is what is right in front of them. They've been able to produce it in a variety of ways. It's a team defensively that is extremely difficult to break down. Just a heads up, you're missing a defender and Yersin Moskera on the back line. That's gonna be a good matchup over there, but they believe they are still in the driver's seat and Inter Miami is gonna have a troubled one tonight. Two boys from Rosario, Argentina lead their respective sides out of the tunnel. Lucho Acosta, Leo Messi, they are lined up now for the national anthem. It's Inter Miami, fresh off the League's Cup trophy, hoping to make an Open Cup final. It's FC Cincinnati hoping to do what they couldn't do six years ago, and that's get through the semi into the final. It's the 108th edition of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. It's time for the national anthem here at TQL Stadium.
they're set to go. Coaches taking their own different paths to get here. Tata Martino in charge of Inter Miami at the World Cup with Mexico. He was just hired the last couple of months here, 2018 Coach of the Year, but he was still with Atlanta. Just guided this club to its first ever piece of hardware in the League's Cup. On the other side, you have Pat Noonan, who has completely revitalized this FC Cincinnati club, in addition to his general manager, Chris Albright. A terrific club affair that the fans have here in Cincinnati for their club. They think, they hope that tonight is the night that somebody knocks off this train that has been into Miami since Messi, Alba, Busquets have joined. And it would be a fitting story if it would be this FC Cincinnati side. The little engine that could opposite this freight train that has been into Miami. Pat Newton has lifted this trophy three times himself as a player. You know, he'd love to do so now as the head coach in charge of FC Cincinnati. Devin, you've been there every step of the way, monitoring this club from USL up through MLS. Everything changed when Pat Noonan and Chris Albright took over. They had a vision for sure, and they came right into it and said, this is, we, we need to start from the ground up. Once again, even though they are a couple of seasons in, and they did a really good job defensively of compiling the opponents to come their direction in 2023. But lest we forget, this is a team in 2022 that turns their heads on the attacking side of the ball. They scored 64 goals last season. They haven't exactly had that luxury this year. That's probably the biggest question mark right now. Starting players for these teams are very different from the ones that you would have seen in the quarterfinal about two and a half months ago. For FC Cincinnati, nine of the 11 are the same. For Inter Miami, Devin, only four of the 11 out there started in their quarterfinal against Birmingham Legion back on June 7th. It's a drastic difference for this club. It's a very different team, and you and I were just talking about it coming on air, that you've got 12 players either through season-long injuries, loans, or departures to another club that are not in conversation anymore. So let's start with Inter Miami, what the visitors bring to the table. You're going to get a tactical switch here. They're going to move into a back three. We see the debut of Tomas Aviles in the center back spot next to Kritsov and Cabal Miller. As you move forward, here's what you want to keep an eye on. You know you're going to get speed on the outside with Alba and Yedlin, but I'm looking at the relationship inside because of the addition of Sean Mota. We haven't seen him from eight, since April 30th, 2023. He had a four to six month injury. He's ahead of time there. And that table has changed as we look to now Leo Campana and Lionel Messi on that front line. Messi, of course, seven appearances, seven goals, and one assist. FC Cincinnati, Pat Noonan, their biggest change to me is going to be on the back line. And it's Ian Murphy sliding over to the left side. You don't have Yersin Moscara. That left side, which is so potent and inviolable to this attack moving forward, the presence is unfathomable at times. But now you're going to be pinned back defensively a little bit. You're matched up against DeAndre Yedlin. You're going to have movement coming out of the midfield. And most importantly, that is the side where Lionel Messi is going to be attacking from to challenge to the interior. The front line can do it. The back line can do it. But can they do it for 90? And we are underway at TQL Stadium. Inter Miami right to left in the pink. FC Cincinnati left to right in the blue. Happy to have you with us this evening. Alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Joe Malpa. Look at DeAndre Yedlin bursting up and down the right side. It was a bit too long, but Devin, that's an area where you felt Inter Miami would like to get up and down against the left side of Pareal and Murphy. Yeah, again, it's a, it's a weird one where both of these clubs are going to want to keep their identity right, and specifically when you're related to FC Cincinnati and Pat Noon and Abel Barreal. He's so good at, at providing the pace on that side. He's got the technique to kind of wander into the central areas, but you also want to make sure that you're not leaving a 23-year-old and Ian Murphy all by his lonesome matched up against one of the greatest of all time. Ujo Acosta was looking for Aaron Bupenza. Proud one to the foul call. Didn't get it from our referee, Joey Dickerson, who has been regarded one of the top in the United States. In the officiating ranks. Bupenza, the recent newcomer for FC Cincinnati as well. Spent a couple of seasons in Qatar and Saudi Arabia before he was signed in June by FC Cincinnati. A terrific track record of scoring goals for fun in Saudi Arabia and Qatar. 13 goals and 20 appearances last year in Saudi Arabia. Here's Gomez for Inter Miami. Messi. Busquets. Of course, a back through for Messi. And himself is in trouble. He's for the foul. for 
Arias. The handball is called. A couple of players on the field for FC Cincinnati who have faced off against Messi in other competitions. Santiago Arias, Junior Moreno, the two. Eight combined appearances for those two guys against Leo Messi, only for club or country. Miazga. Murphy. Barreal. Pearl Barreal was one of the heroes so far in this Open Cup run for FC Cincinnati. Squeakers for both of these teams. 1-0 win for Cincinnati over Louisville City FC of the Second Division USL Championship in the third round. And they beat NYC FC of MLS in the round of 32, 1-0. They had to get by the New York Red Bulls on penalties before in the quarters. They beat Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the USL Championship 3-1. And here they are at home. Murphy looking for Acosta. Lucho Acosta had it blocked. Yedlin tried to clear his foul. Penza some pain as well. Already though, Inter Miami trying to figure out exactly where this rotation is going to come from. You have to start with Lucho Acosta because of his willingness to get off of that front line. Now he's going to be given the freedom to roam all over the pitch and as he rotates out of the pocket, now you're looking at Sean Mota. What does that defensive responsibility look like? He tracks over, the space opens up and then you can start to move laterally across the field. We saw a very high line there from Ian Murphy, said that you have to make sure you have the balance over there, but the DNA of this team and that back three is picking up possession and being very aggressive on the attack-minded football moving forward. Crowd is into its first VAR chant. Good time to let you know this is the first time in U.S. Open Cup history that VAR is available. It will be for the semifinal later tonight as well between Houston and Real Salt Lake. And then again in the final, which is September 27th with both of these teams are playing for this is Cruz Azul in the opening match of the League's Cup. Inter Miami had some trouble dealing with their attack in the early going before an injury to Ian Frey forced some substitutions. Moved DeAndre Yedlin around, brought Noah Allen into the fold. Of course, Messi subbed in late and changed everything for this club with this free kick at the death to win it. But early on, they were struggling. They found a different stride defensively ever since. But to me, that was probably. I understand people are going to laugh at this, but that was more impactful to me in, in that subtle switch. And unfortunately, you have to do it based off a season-ending injury to Ian Frey, but they were getting decimated out on the left-hand flank. At that point in time, DeAndre Yedlin had moved over there, and they were just struggling with the side-to-side -side movements. Ian Frey was getting caught out, too. But after the change, much better. Ball man is hopeful for distance. goalkeeper for FC Cincinnati. He's been their goalkeeper the whole way in Open Cup, and he was in League's Cup as well. He has 13 appearances in MLS since the start of the 2018 season, but he has been their Open Cup goalkeeper this year. Lopenza looking for Vasquez. Hasn't touched the ball yet, Brandon Vasquez, but that's the man always lurking for FC Cincinnati. He's from Messi to Gomez, split the wickets out to Edlin. Space for DeAndre Edlin. Closed down. Womano. Work back for Jordi Alba. Alba. Smith kicks on it. Paul Miller for Jordi Alba. Into Leo Campana. It's been Joseph Martinez predominantly getting the starts for Inter Miami for the league scout. Panda gets to start tonight. Free kick on the way. And a friendly reminder within that rotation back up top. Yeah. Yeah. Since of Joseph Martinez just still hasn't really gotten up to pace with everybody else around him. Hard to believe that with all the changes that have taken place for Inter Miami on the back line, Jordi Alba, Busquets in the midfield, Messi moving up front. Of course, a great season for Drake Callender and goal that you still haven't seen Joseph Martinez from the run of play at the back of the net in this new era. And it's something that, look, his struggles have been there all season long. It started at the beginning of the year. They had a ton of injuries, Leo Campana being one of them. Tactically, what was it going to look like under Phil Neville? 
but none of that has ever matriculated onto this front line. And at some point in time, if they want to be a team that's going to make a run throughout playoffs and find their way back into the conversation of postseason, they're going to have to get him going. And certainly, if they want to progress to a tournament like this, Campana won, Messi for sure, three-headed monster, you could consider it game over. There's been some nice moments of connective play between Martinez and Messi, and Martinez has a couple of assists on Messi goals, but as you mentioned, just hasn't come for him on the score sheet from the open run of play. Although, as far as the leadership of Leo Messi and the plaudits that have been, you've got the best player in the history of this game who has handed the ball to Joseph Martinez on a couple of occasions to take the penalties instead of Messi. They're down now on the far side. And it's Gomez for Inter Miami, one of the three young players they brought in. Bruno Farias, Tomas Aviles, and Gomez, the three, in addition to Busquets, Messi, and Alba. Keep an eye on the stop at the end as he gets his boot back on. shift in the style of play for Inter Miami before all these additions before Tata Martino they were a team who if you look at the stat sheet they were content with 30% of the possession it's not by any means the case anymore Messi to booze from the crowd oh, it's out for Jordi Alba as runners in the box Alba looking through it's dummied by Gomez didn't quite get to Campana So far, see Cincinnati has done a really good job of eliminating most of the balls through that man right there, Sergio Busquets. The problem is, is that bad man named Lionel Messi, who's just kind of floating back and forth in that pocket, right over the shoulders of Wobodeau and Junior Moreno. You certainly know that's going to be a problem all night. And look, it's the two-way, right? We've seen it really from every game, from every team that has been matched up against Inter Miami so far, where you've seen extended periods where they were the aggressor. They were the better team tactically. They certainly were the benefactor. And yet, it's those prime moments that can just catch you off guard, right? Contact into the area here. Inter Miami wanted a free kick, and that was prime messy territory, but instead it goes against John Mota. doesn't change that much for Jean Mota with the addition back into the lineup. You know, we talked how you had so many different looks early on, but they primarily operated out of a three-man midfield. At times, you could box it, especially when Nico Stefanelli was on the field, and turn it into a six-man, four-man block on the inside. Otherwise, a 3-5-2, 4-3-3, you know, at times, they would come deeper, 4-2-3-1. Jean Mota has always had that luxury of being that eight role, that, that back and forth. And an interesting conversation that I picked up behind the scenes about Jean Mota and his addition into MLS, which started last year with Inter Miami. He said to Chris Henderson, he wanted to come into this league. He wanted to be the MVP of Major League Soccer. That's the type of aspiration that he has. But then as this has gone on in his injury, not involved in the League's Cup roster. They did do so for Gregory, who they're also trying to nurse back from an injury that they thought would be six to eight months. So how quickly can he get up to speed with those around him? Not necessarily a change tactically for him, though. Yes. No, it's not. It wasn't. It was Here's for Aviles. We're curious to see exactly how this back three would line up, where Aviles would slot in. Thought it might be him in the middle anchoring it, creeps off to his right. It's been the opposite, creeps off in the middle. Speed. Aviles and Kamal Miller, the ball's up over the channel. You'll see it at 
least you'll hope to see it if you're an FC Cincinnati fan. The way that the game sets up, balls into the channel, guys like Arias and Barrial on the right and left respectively, but the diagonals that you get out of Brandon Vasquez and Vipenza up top, they will challenge those corner areas. And so for Kristoff to rotate from one side to the other, it's not going to be as, as difficult from a center location where he can command all of that. Texture ball, the outside of the boot from Messi for Yedlin, looking for a Capanda. It's headed away by Haglin. If Hadlin had to get that, otherwise Capanda would have had his finger litter there. Here's Campana. He'll be on his back, it's for Yedlin. Viles, first time ball in, finds Campana. How much he could do with it from that angle. A goal kick. The counter argument for Inter Miami and their tactical switch, the ability to get Andre Yedlin and Jordi Alba and exploit their space and speed that they are going to have because the aggression that we talk about, the back three for Cincinnati is one thing. Their wing backs, that's a whole other conversation. Barreal on that side is going to come high and with the way that Messi likes to rotate, he's gonna pinch over there all of a sudden. That conversation with he and Ian Murphy, you gotta be spot on because if you come too close in, those quarters on the outside open up and they push you quickly down into the corner. Picks up. Only a quarter hour in here at DQL Stadium, still scoreless between FC Cincinnati and Inter Miami. Semi final of the 108th edition of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Later tonight, it'll be Real Salt Lake against Houston Dynamo in Houston. The two winners tonight will meet in a month's time, September 27th. Location to be determined. There's a priority ranking for that. Inter Miami could only host if they face Houston Dynamo in the final. RSL wins tonight. No questions about it. They will host. So both these teams have to take care of business tonight and then root for Houston. If either Cincy or Miami would like to host the final. Alba, communication with Monta. Abu Penza looks to go. Brendan Vasquez played through, but too much on it. I haven't called his name yet 15 minutes in. On a moment's notice, that's a man who can make you pay. They've played seven times, these clubs. Vasquez has scored in five of the previous seven meetings. He's pretty impressive in the play in general. Remember, this is a guy who was a part of the Atlanta United Open Cup title run back in 2019. Eight goals and 11 appearances overall within this competition. Two within four this season, but he is also struggling a little bit on the attacking front. Only four goals to his name in domestic play. And you know, the relationships that we talked about, I said coming in, attacking-wise, they probably left a bit to be desired, right? Because you've had Brandon Vasquez, you've got the addition of Bupenza. Dominic Baggi has been in there. Of course, we had Brenner early on this season. They've never fully gotten it going in the final third, and yet you're still talking about right now the best team in Major League Soccer in the lead for the Supporters' Shield. Seven-point lead on St. Louis of the Western Conference. They have an eight-point lead over second place New England Revolution in the Eastern Conference. They're in a really good spot to take home the hardware. I want more to come in this tournament first. Miller, all the way back for Calendar. He was the hero in the League's Cup Final. It went to 11 rounds of penalties, so Calendar forced to take one. He made it, and then he made the stop. Given away by Busquets. Here's Bupenza. Waited too long. Gomez closed it down. Feels like every time there's a moment to break through for Cincinnati, they're just hesitant with the ball and the windows are closing. Moreno. Lucho Acosta. Haglin, one of the favorite sons of this Cincinnati fan base from Cincy. It's been a regular since they've been in MLS. Wobodo. Spade out for Wobodo. Into Moreno, has a pocket of space, feeds Spade out, and Yedlin is there. Andre Yedlin this year went through a really difficult dip in his form. Seems like everybody has been reinvigorated since the additions were made by this team. And he's gonna be case in point. Vasquez. Roll it all, won't get there. Really going, it's nearly 70-30 turn of the possession in Inter Miami's favor. Good spell for FC Cincinnati. Moreno. 
Costa. Ricochets through for Bupenza. Here's Lucho Acosta waiting for it. And he pokes it home. Lucho Acosta says TQL Stadium into Raptors. 1-0 FC Cincinnati. We talked about the DNA of this team being the defensive stalwarts, absolutely. But in order to have success on the other side, it rests on the morals and absolute skill set by Lucho Acosta. The deep line position that he always comes out of, he presses teams to make them uncomfortable. You have to chase, yes, a benefactor of the deflection, but a massive little flick on by Bupenza. Third time so far, even after coming off that quick little redirect, they're able to play off of him. He's got the vision in behind. He's got Lucho Acosta out in front, and they have their opening goal. Since the revitalization of the Inter Miami roster, they've trailed at times, including that FC Dallas game, which turned into a 4 4 thriller. It's the first time they have failed to score first in a game in these seven. How will they respond now in a hostile environment? Cincinnati, 20 wins, nine draws, one loss. That is one loss in 30 tries at TQL over the last year and two months. Now ahead on Inter Miami, it's Yedlin. Long for Bupenza, Black stays down for now. Bupenza holds it, ships it, scores it. Black comes up late. We wait to see what VA. It'll dampen the celebration for now. And we'll get a second look at it. Now he's offside. It's not even a question. There's a good yard and a half between he and the back line. This is what they do to you, FC Cincinnati. They make you really challenge yourself as to where the threat is going to come from. You've seen combination play in a 30-yard span. All of a sudden, there's that speed that we talk about, the diagonal that I referenced, where you want a Kamal Miller or an Aviles chasing back instead. Great back shoulder run that's just a bit offside by Bupenza, who's challenging Kripsov in that central location. Yeah, the unlucky bit here for FC Cincinnati. They released the smoke behind their own goal. So their own goalkeeper is looking through the smoke at Messi. Through for Gomez, saved by Cad. Smoke didn't matter. Unfortunately for them, most of these opportunities have been half chances at best, moving away from goal. Whoever set off the smoke, by the way, in the supporter section, I think owes Alec Cannon an apology and a thank you. I promise you, he works through this game, he'll get whatever he wants. <laughs> there won't be an issue with that. I see, somehow 
slips it through for Gomez, who's taken out. I haven't seen a card produced yet in this match. Joey Dickerson giving one final stir warning, it appears. One more lead for FC Cincinnati. Lucho Acosta, 18 minutes in. It's one of the number 10s from Rosario Argentina. It's just maybe not the one that some expected opening the scoring. Don't tell it to the fans in attendance here. They knew which one in their hearts would open the scoring. Messi had an interesting bit this week in the media. They had asked him how he always goes about exchanging jerseys with somebody on the other team. He said he always tries to find a fellow Argentine. I think it's going to be Acosta tonight. Those two were chatting it up before the game, and here is Acosta once more. Acosta harassed by Busquets. Dickerson allows him to play through. Switched out for Arias. Arias taken out by Alba. The card has to come out at some point. It's getting out of hand, and here it is. On cue, Joey Dickerson gives the first card to Jordi Alba. That ball's got to come sooner, though, if you're Lucho Acosta. I understand you've got pressure on your backside, but you could have played it first time to Brandon Vasquez. Same argument just in front of us, Bupenza. One of the things that they're finding a lot of success in right now, there's excellent movement from the two nines up top. And they're making these three center, back, center backs track. They're having trouble with it too. Kamal Miller and Aviles, that rotation back across, the communication seems to be lacking a little bit. Would also say that the wing backs have gotten a lot higher and a lot more active. So all of a sudden coming back and forth, you're not sure where the threat's coming from. Calendar, the threat was just handling that pass. And now it's through for Gomez. Messi, every time he touches the ball, he's being booed by the stadium. It could come back to bite them if he gets him going. And that was Busquets. Miller. Tony Alba, Kamal Miller. Alba, two breaks out for that one. Now it's John Mota. Aviles. They've been on the brink of a lot of dangerous counters, since he, but just the hesitation, the wrong ball, something. Absolutely, I'm with you. They can't get out of their own way when it comes to the decision making, and it's not something that's really plagued them throughout the course of the season so far. And the look that you started with was pin deep defensively, having trouble breaking out of that. That's no longer an issue. Midfield more active. Watch the spacing on the inside. It's a good look. Junior Moreno, Wobodo, much better balance between the two. Wobodo wins it. Vasquez holding his run. Didn't tiptoe it properly. It was offside. Well done by Wobodo not to play it. And waste the chance. Hagland. Arias. And Bupenza. Thought he had the second goal of the match. That was offside. for Inter Miami over the last seven games of League's Cup in this new era where they've seemed rattled. It was against Cruz Azul. It was against FC Dallas in that 4-4 thriller. They were rescued late. Each time previously, they pulled themselves out of it. Acosta gets it through. Busquets. gets up. Couldn't handle it. Busquets gave it away needlessly. Moreno, Arias. Is 
just checking over his shoulder. He's being pressured every single time he touches the ball. It is maybe the most difficult 30 minutes I think we've seen from Busquets since he's joined. such freedom to roam. He's been left, he's been right, he's been center. He's on the right side. Murphy pushes it through. Joseph Dickerson in the midfield and DeAndre Yedlin, all the space that opened up for him. Great job, by the way, working back here by Diego Gomez. Even on the faulty touch, the quick response comes back to Acosta, pulls it from behind. No harm, no foul there whatsoever. Immediately by Yedlin down into the channel. And why, oh, why did they not let this continue? That is a very interesting decision from the referee. Trying to plead his case that he should have been a yellow for Miami. The play to continue. That's going to take us into the first half hydration break. That's on a bit of a sour note for Inter Miami. They felt they had that advantage to try and tie things up, and they're down because of Lucho Acosta. Now 13 minutes ago. I give you a couple of different looks within the first half and, and trying to find a way to get that breakthrough. They worked outside, it didn't work for them. They weren't able to play quick enough into it. Tried to come through Junior Moreno and Abina Wobodo, but everything certainly had to run through Lucho Acosta. Watch him drop off the front line, just off the right shoulder. As he picks it up here, now he's floating in that gray area, right? It's a great move by Barreal because he comes in and you think, okay, well, the presence is only going to be on the outside, but Acosta follows him through. So now it's a 2v1. You don't have the numbers. He squeaks in behind. You lose the runner if you're Avilez. You lose the space if you're Kristoff, and you lose the overall battle by Drake Callender. 
There is a nasty little deflection that comes off the ball over top, but absolute class by Lucho Acosta to grab his first Open Cup goal and to put them into the lead. Goal still credited to Acosta despite the deflection. Lucho Acosta. Favorite here the last couple of years. FC Cincinnati, same hometown. Leo Messi, Rosario, Argentina. Come a long way since then. Costa actually, rumors have been swirling about getting his ducks in a row to play for the U.S. men's national team going forward. It's a lengthy process that he hopes can be resolved in the near term. Copa America coming next summer. Messi, perhaps Argentina here on U.S. soil in Copa America next summer. Had a few moments in his first 30 minutes. Produce that the brilliance yet that will impact the scoreboard. And he has in every game so far. Scored in all seven of the League's Cup matches he played in for Inter Miami. Ten goals overall. Already third in the club's all-time scoring list. It is still a young club, of course, only dating back to 2020, and they've had their struggles from then till now. Gonzalo Iguain. Sure, the club's all-time leading there. scorer. As he comes in for no, no, three and no, climbing. Back underway, back of the hydration break. Alba, the back heel nutmeg through a Haglin, but we'll get it on the back side. him on the bench they would have to do some patchwork you know Allen has played the left side of a three back for them this year he is the only natural defender available for them on the bench today as it's listed you can move no Allen into that conversation if you really wanted to and certainly you don't want to bring this man out of the midfield but Busquets is capable of playing on the back line too we've seen that at Barcelona and so if you had to go deep into the well there are certainly options they're not necessarily preferred the bigger conversation right now is how to find more impressive movements off the ball going forward because to me it's been very predictable. Messi coming into the pocket, playing in. There's not a lot of rotation off the ball. They haven't gotten the structure right on the inside. Credits offensively to FC Cincinnati. But moving side to side, everything's primarily been on the right. We haven't seen a lot of Jordi Alba. It's been much easier, not only defensively, to be set up to keep the game in front of you but to then be able to punch back if you're Cincinnati, and then it makes you uncomfortable. You're playing from deeper liar areas. Coming 80 yards away, as opposed to 30, is a very different argument that like the, they'd like to close the gap on. Cincinnati just played Sunday against their rival, Columbus. They were thrashed 3-0. Saturday, Virgin Miami was taken down Nashville for the League's Cup crowd. So these two teams had very different weekends, and we wondered how they would be affected in getting back into the swing of things on short notice for both of them. Just a few days later, it's been Cincinnati rebounding better than Inter Miami so far. For the regular season this year, see Cincinnati undefeated after a loss. Never lost two in a row. Obviously, we're not in league play here, but still, subsequent match for a team that does not lose back to back games. the last 
last 30. Over the last 14 months. Yedlin. There's Messi. Coming off the right. This is where he's dangerous. He's dangerous anywhere, I guess. <laughs> How many times have we seen him start the run there, end up six yards from goal? Saw looks to be all right out there. Alba. Getting into uncharted territory here in the short history that is this era for Inter Miami. Time and Leaks got banned, scored and scored early against their opponents. First time they haven't scored first. Most of the goals have come first. Thousand to two thousand minutes of the match. We've saw it. I don't want to go with it. I'm just surprised they haven't tried to go direct here. And certainly, that's not the forte of this team as. They picked up all of these players, and the structure has changed under Tata Martino. But at some point in time, especially guys like Jordi Alba and DeAndre Yedlin, ping one in, push this defensive front back, and allow yourself to then play underneath. You don't necessarily have to get on the end of it, but you've got to start resetting these lines. They're coming way too deep. Cincinnati backing off and saying, fine, you want to have 92% passing accuracy? You go side to side with 100 passes in the middle of the field and have fun there. It's interesting because, again, small sample size, seven games in this era, but when Leo Campana has been out there all season long, he's been the direct option. When Martinez has been out there, it's completely different. So we're not seeing the play as they typically do when Campana's out there. But they have a chance now from the corner. First of the match, Tom from Monta. John Monta will angle it in, and it's an opportunity wasted. Cincinnati. Notice the same hesitation though once again. It's a very similar move to what we saw from Alvaro Barrio about five minutes prior. That ended up in the half chance at the top of the 18. You expect this to continue over to the left hand flank because Barrio is the threat outside, but smartly done by Wobodo to just drop that shoulder, pivot back to the right, and open the space up in the middle. There's Wobodo. Murphy. A few minutes to go plus stoppage time in this first half, but Devin, would it surprise you if Tata Martino, if this holds, shook things up with a couple of changes at halftime? No, not whatsoever. I mean, if you just start with the conversation you were talking about a second ago with Leo Campana, nine touches, eight of which are first time passes. So he's eight for eight within the passing ranks, but that means every single ball that has come into him has primarily gone backwards in the negative fashion. So you don't want to stretch and play off of him, you don't want to play through him. So you don't have an option up there. Leo Messi trying to find the game. Pockets underneath, coming to the right, coming to the left. They haven't been able to get him on the ball enough. He's only got 20 touches on the ball. Dangerous, not at all, right? There's not a conversation at any point in time in this first half where you've looked and gone, wow, Inter-Miami looked very dangerous on the ball moving forward. 0 0.07 expected goals so far in this first half. Not an exact science, but when the number is that minuscule, they're not doing something right offensively. Here's Messi. Immediately smothered and taken down by Bupenza. This time Dickerson plays advantage. Did not do so prior to the hydration break. In the chagrin of Inter Miami. Busquets. Campana. Again, very deep here. We usually see him cycle back this far, even to possession. Man through and through for this club. Messi. Busquets. They seem unsure going forward into Miami in this match. Three Edlin. Frustration to win 
in this tournament. Now it's Messi for Campana. Leo Campana to center it. This good clearance by Cincy. And a free kick for Inter Miami. Crowd thought it was going the other way as Busquets lunged in. Would be taken. Monta. Jordi Alba. John Monta. Toward the back post over everybody and everything. Now for a goal kick. Here, though, from into Miami, and look, we just talked about El Campano and you know, Messi getting him on the ball more. If you have to come deeper to do it, then do it. Sometimes you have to take what the game is giving you. You set up a certain way tactically, it's not in your favor. Conversations from the sideline. Tata Martino has been trying to pull them in different directions. So, as Campana comes in, that was a much better sequence by Jordi Alba, not only getting involved. Maintaining this presence out on this left-hand side. He's gotten stuck to the interior a little bit, wedged in between Adias and Nick Hagelin. He has to make sure that as the rotation comes out, he's pulling to this sideline to open up space for others in between. That'll, in turn, give him the opportunity to get in behind if they come on a diagonal. Both of these teams, relative newborns in the 108-year history of the U.S. Open Cup. Sixth appearance for FC Cincinnati. Some of those when they were in second division USL championship. Rest of them since they've joined MLS, they've had a strong record. 12 wins, four losses, three draws. In a semifinal six years ago, they fell in extra time against the New York Red Bulls. After Miami, their lone voyage into this tournament was last year. They lost in the round of 16 against their bitter rivals, Orlando City, who went on to lift the trophy. And there's some similarities between this run for Cincy and last year's from Orlando. Sometimes you literally need the luck of the draw. Orlando hosted every match last year. Cincy's only got on the road once this year, and it was that game against the Rebels. And they won a penalty. Six minutes now shown for stoppage time in this first half. That was an Orlando team that just played their first game on the road since the 2019 edition, right? So you go 19, you go 22. We didn't have it in 2021 because of COVID. So yes, yeah, certainly the cards have to fall in your favor, but the form has been there as well. There's no questioning that. Outside of that opening 30 minutes against Cruz Azul since the addition of Lionel Messi, Busquets, Jordi Alba, Diego Gomez. I mean, the list goes on and on, but the soccer gods have not been favorable in the opening 45 minutes here tonight so far. Play that ball down into the corner. I mean, dear Lord, how many times do you have to make the run before you just release the thing? could even qualify that even further with Cruz Azul because they didn't sub on until the hour mark. So since those two have stepped on the field, Messi and Busquets, we have not seen this from Inter Miami in any capacity. We can talk tactics all you want, but you got to execute too. And the space is there. 
certainly for DeAndre Yedlin. Put this thing down into the channel. Let DeAndre Yedlin get on the end of it and start to punch back the other direction instead. Time after time, instead of the first or second, it's three, four, five touches. They got to release it sooner. Halfway through the six minutes of stoppage time given, it's Messi for Campana. side you're going into halftime a lot happier maybe some opportunities left on the table as they could have maybe sprung a few more counters that they were hesitant to pull the trigger and didn't manifest but be happy so far if they get through these next couple of minutes Mata is it through for Yedlin open to the channel Yedlin clicked on by Gomez Space that can be exploited on that far side. Just played into him. To be fair, the ball's a little difficult to deal with hopping up off the deck. But the other side of this show is that not only when you play into DeAndre Yedlin are you getting the benefactor of the speed and the ability to put good service into the box, now all of a sudden you've taken a guy like Alvaro Barreal and you pin him real deep. You don't have the ability to stretch over there on that left flank anymore. Decision making for FC Cincinnati on the night quite clear. I would say that to your point a second ago, if you're going to get it wrong, getting it wrong on a 1 nothing lead 35 yards for opponents, that isn't the worst thing sitting on that shutout. The problem is, is how long is that actually going to last? What a turn. It pans up right to Calendar. As soon as he made that turn, this crowd leapt to its feet, playing for something spectacular. They didn't quite produce it, but there was sense of the talent he brings and why they brought him into the fold. some assist up top and they'd be more clinical 30 yards and in inter miami tasted their first bit of hardware this past weekend when they took home the league's cup they want to get to another final but they'll have to do so coming from behind fc cincinnati nearly tasted a final in this tournament six years ago it was cut out from them at the last moment but they are 45 minutes away from getting there stay tuned more to come from tql stadium
One nil lead for FC Cincinnati over Inter Miami through 45 minutes. Let's take a look at highlights from half number one. The lone goal belonged to Lucho Acosta with both of these teams. Arms length away from the trophy. See if they can hold on to this lead. And it was just a long stretch of play from both of these teams throughout the half where nothing really materialized. Chances, as you'll see here, are few and far between for both. Oh, to me, the biggest thing in the first half that Inter Miami had to deal with was poor execution in the final third. And they certainly didn't have a lot of chances, but the space was there. Whether you had Kripsov coming off the back line, we saw it a couple of times with Kamal Miller and Aviles as well. Working through the middle, they had so much space on the outside. Great little turn here by Messi, and he shows you exactly what the blueprint is going to be for this team to find success moving forward. The problem is, is that movement right there only happened about twice in the first half. To win the height advantage is going to be another interesting one come the second half because you can get down into the corner, you can stick this thing into the box, but all of a sudden you're looking at guys like Ian Murphy, Nick Haglin, and Matt Miazga that are all six foot plus two of which are over six three. So to win the area battle, difficult. Now let's go to the movement coming forward from FC Cincinnati. This is where they get you at their best. And it's Lucho Acosta coming out of that center location. As he wanders to the side, it's the relationship that has been a constant all season long. Beautiful move right there. Balbo Barreal, he drags the back line with him. That reopens the space up in front that had previously been vacated by Acosta. The flick on by Bupenza. Acosta in behind. 1-0 FC Cincinnati. Crowd went absolutely bonkers after that, and rightfully so. They've been waiting to erupt. They almost did a second time, but Bupenza was offside. I don't even care that he took it off his chest <laughs> because the touch is still sublime. He's in no matter what, except for the fact that he jumps the gun a little bit early here. It's about two and a half yards, and if he slows the run just a bit, you're in behind and you're 2-0. And that was a 10-minute span where the diagonals on the back line were incredible for Cincinnati moving forward. Has it been much for Leo Campana in the attacking end? for Inter Miami hasn't been much for the team as a whole. This one almost snuck through to him. On the ball from Gomez. Save was made by Can through the smoke, but I just noticed as we're sitting here high, first above TQL Stadium, it looks like Joseph Martinez might be coming on to begin the second half by language with the coaching staff. But Leo Campana struggled in that first half. Friendly reminder, by the way, that Alec Can and goal has been incredible for them in domestic cup play. He is, in theory, unbeaten because their only losses have come after the fact in penalties. He's 4-0-3. One goal against and two shutouts and seven appearances. Great save at the end. But this is a very good tale of the tape that was for the opening 45 minutes. A lack of options moving forward for Inter Miami for sure. Lack of decision making that could have seen the host squad go up to possibly even 3-0. If not for a couple of changes here and there, they have to decide what they want to do in the midfield. To me, that's the biggest thing because if you change the look on the back line, you can win the midfield battle. They lost that plot in the first half. FC Cincinnati is 45 minutes away from the U.S. Open Cup final. We're a few minutes away from half number two here in Cincinnati.
trickling back out onto the field here at TQL Stadium, set for half number two of this semifinal clash between FC Cincinnati and Inter Miami. We have you with us alongside the ex-German pro, Devin Kerr. I'm Joe Malpa, and Devin, this is where, right before we begin this second half, we would usually say something smart about what we think is going to happen in the second half based on the first half, but the truth <laughs> is not a lot happened in the first half to even dissect. Yeah, it gets to a point where... Look, if things aren't going your way or you're not performing at a certain level, you walk into that dressing room and the coach just looks around and says, guys, what are we doing here? We're fighting for a title. You're 45 minutes away with the opportunity, if you're FC Cincinnati, of chasing a nice piece of silverware. And if you're Inter Miami, it's really a gut check. This is the first time from a character standpoint that they've truly been tested. And Tata Martino will turn and say, how bad do you want this? How much can we go and show that after all the success we've had in the first seven games of League's Cup, that we can battle back from behind and go chase a result on the road? Cincy in blue, right to left. Inter Miami in pink, left to right. Joey Dickerson in yellow sends us on our way in half number two. 45 minutes. That's all that stands between FC Cincinnati and a trip to the U.S. Open Cup final that so narrowly escaped them in 2017. They're still a second division team in USL Championship. We're going up against the New York Red Bulls. Fell 3-2 in extra time. A lot has changed since then. They came in in 2019 to MLS. They took their lumps mightily. 12th place in 2019, 14th in 2020 and 2021. Bottom of the heap in the East before they finally made the playoffs last year. And now they're on the brink of winning the regular season title in 2023. Chris Albright and Pat Noonan have changed so much. It's a club that is light years ahead of where it was just a few short years ago. And this would be a nice feather in the cap if they can make it through to the Open Cup Final a month from now. September 27th. They'll meet either Houston Dynamo or Royal Salt Lake. We'll meet later tonight in Houston. where they pick it up at halftime. And we have a pretty good idea, but interesting how quickly the Bailey was willing to step out of their comfort zone and make sure that a little liquid courage was available for reinforcements in the second 45 minutes. The beverages for the adults were flowing freely. I'm sure. One thing that wasn't flowing freely was substitutions. Well, we might see some changes coming out of the gate for these teams, but the 22 who started this match are still a 22 out there. from the first half. It's Obi Wobodo with one for Cincinnati. Jordi Alba and Jean Motta each have one for Inter Miami. Vasquez muscles off the wall. Miller. Now Miller's vacated that space. Can they exploit it? Switch all the way out to Barajal. 
keep it in, but not rescue it as Yedlin has it. Rucho Acosta looking for Bupenza. We have seen Acosta left, right, center, just all over the place. He has so much freedom for Cincinnati. That move that we were just talking about right there, though, with Lucho Acosta as he comes. You haven't necessarily seen that combination play that you've desired if you're Pat Noonan on the front line. It's probably the biggest talking point outside of goals. Goals, certainly. But the actual combination play between Brandon Vasquez, who pens up, and Lucho Acosta within that front three. Great move by Acosta that has the space in behind. Who pens up, just not on the same page. Mata looking through for Campana. Hagelin cuts it off. this foot come away from the body that right there as you step through if he leans with just his upper body and physique he probably wins that ball and he can step in between but the problem is, is studs on that back side that is that's gonna leave a mark first in line for the masseuse for sure that might be first in line for the ice pack I don't know if there's any massaging that one Mata. Finds Messi. Depends on working back defensively. It's a bit laughable to be fair because there's context on you know Messi as it plays into him should have been a foul and then you know, the direction certainly a favor given Joseph Dickerson on the inside we'll say that look we we talked about the one in the first half where you didn't let the continuation of play for DeAndre Yedlin outside of that he was pretty wide open and he's done a really good job of just allowing them to play policing them in certain areas but the cards that have been issued have been warranted nothing in terms of really ticky tacky stuff that has gotten away from him at all and just let the guys play messi crowd serenading him still as he cuts in serenading him with the booze as they have been all night Base for Arias. We'll get there. 
Bupenza making the run for the penalty spot. It's back in step for Vasquez! Brandon Vasquez doubles the lead! Beautiful. This is total football from FC Cincinnati and exactly what you want. It's a turnover in deep line fashion. There's your target man who starts the movement overall. You play into Vasquez, space on the outside. Now where are the options going to come from? It's a good run, to be fair, by Bupenza, who's able to occupy two center backs. Chris Saul gets it wrong. He doesn't recognize that Brandon Vasquez has continued this run coming forward. Makes his way to the top of the 18. Beautiful first touch. Marksman to the bottom corner. Third of the tournament. And the extension of the lead for FC Cincinnati. Frustrated in the first half. Didn't see much by way of the ball, by way of any opportunities. Made the most of this one, and that is going to scurry things on the bench for Inter Miami. They're prepared to make three changes in just a moment. Looks like David Ruiz, Facundo Farias, and Robert Taylor are the three up and ready for Inter Miami. Now down two. Ten minutes in the second half. Brian Vasquez continues to be a thorn in the side of Inter Miami. These teams have met now eight times in all competitions. He has scored in six of those games. Goals in domestic play for FC Cincinnati this season in 19 appearances. He struggled in League's Cup and maybe another one that gets away from him. But he just finds a way. But this cup competition for him, it resonates. You're just joining us in a guy that has seen success here before. He was part of Atlanta United in 2019. At that point in time, not the established striker that people have come to know and love. Conversations with the national team, appearances, talks of boots abroad, and the focal point for this attacking unit. Now nine goals and 12 appearances in the competition, third of this iteration. Jordi Alba was irate with Leon Campana there. It was a brilliant ball through from Messi that would have had Alba into goal, and Campana cut it off. So Miller, Mata, Yedlin off. Ruiz, Farias, 
and Taylor on. Oh, not surprised by the John Mota switch. First game back, laboring for sure, and just never really felt truly comfortable on the inside. Finding any sort of connectivity at play. The Kamal Miller one, he seemed to pull up a little bit on that goal and wonder as to whether or not he picked up an injury. The reason we said Kristoff was a speed thing, though, you gained some of that with Robert Taylor rotating into the right bat spot. Although not necessarily the preferred position to get them there. He's certainly comfortable doing so. They've used him in that fashion before. Free kick on the way. so long and Santiadias just couldn't get it to him quick enough and there is just so much space off the shoulders of both Tomas Aguilas as well as Kursov this evening. Messi combining with Farias. Upenza. Works it by Gomez flicked back to Bupenza. Matches. Well, FC Cincinnati have a pretty strong record defensively in league play this year. 24 matches played, and they allowed 28 goals. You take that a step further. They have two distinct outliers. They give up five against St. Louis and three against Columbus. Here's Ruiz. One cleanly by Lobano, who had to be careful on the yellow. Acosta cuts it through for Vasquez racing. To get there ahead of Calendar, and he puts it wide. Same run. It's the same exact run for FC Cincinnati. Well done by Brandon Vasquez. It's all about the timing on one side. You talked about it, Wobodo. It's a game saving tackle. David Ruiz can't let it go because he's in an offside position. The runner coming over the right side. It's majestic. To be fair, from Brandon Vasquez to get in behind, Calendar gets caught in no man's land, not sure if he should come or stay. And that slight hesitation allows him to just get around the outside. But he didn't pick up, didn't catch his bearings, and didn't grab a second of the night. There's change now for Cincy. Bupenza's night is done. Yuya Kubo takes his spot. Yuya Kubo has a goal in this tournament. Round of 16 against New York Red Bulls that won one time. They then won on penalties.
Giants, though, he's interested in this game right now. Very interested within the midfield, but the the opportunity coming through. This little quick little turnover. Another diagonal run. Stop me if you've heard that before. Let Kubo cook. He's trying to pick out this near post. It actually took a wicked deflection that Drake Callender made an excellent save on. fan base would have scored there off the corner it would have let's say it would become unglued here but it has been basically for about 20 minutes ever since Vasquez gave them a two-goal lead but these subs have changed it and certainly we talked about David Ruiz and his interest within the game done a real good job of popping out of the midfield breaking onto the front line would say that that's the ability of the debut of Pacudo Farias who is also operating on the left when he's coming down and you're getting two down underneath with Diego Gomez and Sergio Busquets to work off of each other. Center backs are coming high. You're creating width. They've got a much better balance right now in attack. The real question is going to be, it still comes to decision making in the final 20 yards and in. before the ball's even played because of the mismatch right around the penalty mark. You've got Alvaro Barayal at 5'7-ish, and that's on a good day against Leo Campana, who's just over 6'2", and just a massive frame that all you're looking to do here, put it right at the top of the six. You let your nine chase it, explode into a danger area, and go up and win the individual battle. It's a mismatch, the marking's off, but it's perfection for Inter-Miami. They're back. Don't call it a comeback yet, just yet, but they are definitely better over the last 15 minutes. 
22 minutes remaining. Now a one goal game again. I mentioned it before, they've already come back from two goals down in this messy era. Then against FC Dallas. Now it's Ruiz. Game gonna be stretched here. And no foul there against Cincy. Tata Martino is irate on the bench. And Cincy could just go here. They have space. What is Lobano doing? Acosta. Perfectly shaped ball into Vasquez. He's tripped up. A free kick on the way. What color is the card? It's yellow. Joey Dickerson pointing at clips off. There was another man back there. Yellow card. Review midweek is going to be a difficult one because these center backs just cannot pick up the horizontal runs in from behind from FC Cincinnati. You start on one end, that's a beautiful tackle from Matt Miaska. He wears the armband for a reason on the shift back over and then immediately come in the other direction. It was a bit slow to matriculate into the final third, but heads up play by Brandon Vasquez. That's a situation where as you get in behind, you don't have to continue the run unnecessarily. The angle that it was providing him was starting to move away from goal. Heads up play, he slows his run in front of the defender and creates this opportunity from about 25 yards out. Favor of Costa's right foot or Manuel's left foot from here. We're talking it over now. This is certainly in a much better location throughout the course of the evening. Though they haven't had one like this, they've employed some trickery. You wonder if it's a touch stop in to try and play around the wall because you've got Junior Marino right there. And there's a ton of space on the near post though. Can you get up and down fast enough? That's a tall ass. It is but calendar got a hand to it. Was going wide, but he took no chances. so difficult with the left and right and just watch the overall positioning for Drake Callender. He's already on an angle. That's just good goalkeeping. Reads it the entire way and it's headed to the outside of the post. But that's a man who's been in incredible form this year and has certainly earned his national team call-ups. took a little skip up off the deck and caught the hand coming right through the middle. Watch the little dummy by Haglin. It's tough. I mean, that, the arm's close enough, but at the same point in time, you can still argue that it's an unnatural position. Bounces away and allows the ball to drop right in front of him, too. That's well done by the referee crew. Second time tonight. The smoke has been set off by the supporters, thinking Bailey that they had a goal. It was Bupenza who was called offside in the first half when they could have made it 2-0. It's Kubo this time for a handball. Could have made it 3-1. 73rd minute at TQL Stadium. Good to have you with us still. The ex-German pro Devin Kerr. I'm Joe Malpa. Joseph Martinez still warming up. For Inter Miami, when might we see him? Oh, yeah! Ucho Acosta opened the score in 18th minute. Brandon Vasquez made a 2 0 lead in the 53rd. Leo Campana brought it back to 2 1 in the 68th. And now the attendance announced in house 25,513. Some smatterings of pink and Argentina, blue and white, but the rest of them see this held on to. A 2 1 lead for FC Cincinnati. Getting closer and closer to an Open Cup final, but not there yet.
Now slips it through for Kubo. Black stays down. Yuya Kubo denied by Callender. Busquets. again from you Yakubo notice Brandon Vasquez he drags Tomas Aviles with him and same conversation it's the back line who can't follow through to be fair the way that they're attacking right now extremely aggressive with their outside back so there's more pressure from Diego Gomez and Sergio Busquets within the middle but they've got to track these runners it's 2-1 two goals called back but plenty of opportunities on the counter for FC Cincinnati Busquets into the foul. Quickly takes it. Barrias. Messi. Picks up. Cincinnati in a moment. Sergio Santos just shed the pity and was ready to make his way to the fourth official but have to wait. We are in our second half hydration break here. Two to one lead for FC Cincinnati. As we have this break in the action with a quarter of an hour remaining. And out to a 2 0 lead. Now Campana brought one back for Inter. Let's go back to the opener 18 minutes in. Again, this is all about Lucho Acosta and how good they were on that left-hand flank. Barreal starts to open things up as Acosta comes in from underneath that nine. He just continues the run. And Bupenza, when you don't have a lot going for you, you don't have the opportunities, he still had a good shift in providing the chances coming forward. A little flick in behind. There is certainly a little connection coming off of Kamal Miller, but it's one to nothing, FC Cincinnati. More of the same as the game went on. And it was all from deep lying positions, the ability to exploit quickly going the other direction. Your target man, and Brandon Vasquez. Notice how deep he is. He's 70 yards from opposition's net, but as it sprays out wide, doesn't try and push the tempo to chase the near post run. Instead, allows the play to develop. Space, perfection, 2 0 FC Cincinnati. And then from there, you could sense the urgency from Inter Miami dipping into the bench, a trio of substitutions, and they changed the game drastically. I was a big fan of what David Ruiz has brought, and they've done a much better job of getting to the outside and working in. That's where they're at their best. But this does come a set piece opportunity, dead ball situation. It's a mismark, and it's that simple. You cannot allow Alvaro Barreal matched up against Leo Campana. That's going to be left on Murphy, Miazga, and Haglund on the back line. However, it's still two to one. And the dream for either one of these squads still alive with just inside 15 minutes to Inter Miami is going to make their last two changes. Noah Allen, Joseph Martinez will be the two coming in. The sub for Cincinnati is Sergio Santos in for Brandon Vasquez. If Inter Miami ties it, some of you who might have been recently tuned in for Inter Miami's run of the League's Cup final, remember that it was straight to penalties. We will have 30 minutes extra time if this does end up tied. Sit here and talk all day, Joe, about what is available for FC Cincinnati, but you've got to 
take some chances, and there's no doubt about it. Underneath with guys like Sergio Busquets and David Ruiz, who've been actually Ruiz has been so impactful but positionally. It changes the look on the inside. They're trying to bring Acosta out of the argument deeper and remove him from the argument going forward. Less than an hour away from kickoff in the other semifinal, Rail Salt Lake visiting Houston Dynamo. Campana dummies it through. Martinez was lurking. Taylor tried to fend for it, lost it. Think so. That'll be a yellow. Sergio Santos took one on the other end of the field, too, before this popped out, too. Body out. How quick is this explosion? And just the understanding that all he's going to do is get a touch. And I'll tell you what, we're talking rules. Uh, a couple of years ago, we may be having a very different conversation as to the decision on Kruzov. Remember, it's distance, it's direction. The quote unquote last man rule. And permanent red no longer standing. Not certainly in. This is what I grew up in. <laughs> Someone went in behind. You, you took him down. You didn't care. The problem was is that usually ended up in a red card and automatic penalty. It's a different talking point now. You weren't alive for that, though, so I was not. It's a new problem. Tata Martino was alive for that. He also just picked up a yellow card. Chipped in for Santos. Crowd thought it should have been since he's thrown. Doesn't matter. They win it back anyway. Lucho Acosta. Yuya Kubo. Ten minutes remaining. A spot in the final 35 days from now against either Real Salt Lake or Houston is what's at stake. If Houston wins later, whoever wins this game will host. If RSL wins, whoever wins this game will go on the road. Acosta has Santos open, looks to find him. And it was a heartbeat too early, the ball. You watch Sergio Santos pull up out of this run. He thinks that Lucho Acosta is going to go by his lonesome. He's got the one-on-one, -on -one, and as good as he is, cutting things back across the ability to try and get it on his right foot. Boss's hesitation by the nine up top, and just that that brief little pause disables his ability to get on the back post run. Jordi Alba, David Ruiz, for Taylor. Taylor's ball, dangerous one looking for Martinez. Taylor has been a different man since Messi's come around. Few goals to his name, few assists to his name, looking like a completely different player. It's just a testament to the way Messi, Alba, Busquets have risen the tides of all the other players on the team as well. Taylor has benefited the most as he finds Messi here. Alba. Options are bound in the box. Alba floats it to a Campano. Take on the back post for El Campano. You don't really have enough time to take it on a secondary touch. And then he's a bit surprised because if you watch right side of your screen, Ian Murphy backs off of him here. He doesn't want to foul. And back right there, he just pauses a little bit. And that little back step, Campano, very surprised that he's able to let one go. But because the ball is still on the rise, he catches it underneath and drops it up over top. I'll tell you what. Coming into the night, you and I were looking at the lineups and what the matchups could be. I was very concerned for Ian Murphy on the back line and, and what he would have to deal with. But so far, 83 minutes in, he's actually been very steady, the youngster, in the absence of Yerson Mosquera. Massive loss for FC Cincinnati. They're preparing more changes of their own here. They have their final three changes now being prepared.
the warm-up pennies. Third, fourth, and fifth subs coming for Cincy. With six minutes to go and a giveaway here, finds Acosta. Now Santos. Sergio Santos. Nowhere to go with it in the end, force line. Ruiz clipped by Acosta. He's incredible, Lucho Acosta. 12 goals and eight assists and 23 appearances domestically. I'll give you an idea why there's talks about him as Elena Donovan. MVP of Major League Soccer. The ball from Alvaro Barrio. Sublime. Just couldn't finish it off. This midfield is. That's why we're going to see some Celtics playing in itself here. And that's not going to bode well for FC Cincinnati. By that taken out. Acosta was just warned by Dickerson. And now he'll count him up and show the yellow. So the only two with yellows right now for Cincy. And they started to show the numbers on the board, but now Pat Noonan wants to hold it up to the next stoppage. Uh, Lucho Cross just come up lane here, and he was getting ready to make the subs, but he's not sure as to whether or not he's going to be able to continue. Is it an actual injury? Did he pull up a cramp? And he's just trying to work through it right now and give his manager some options over the next 30 seconds of what might be necessary in order to continue on. Messi. Serving it up. The good thing, Devin, as you mentioned earlier, Lucho Acosta has almost no defensive responsibility, so he wasn't necessarily needed there. But this is where they need him to get back up and try to do something in transition. Reaching at that left hamstring, Acosta. Still working it out. Down below us. Just out of your picture. that we saw from Inter Miami for a 15 minute stretch or so in the second half that started to fade. Once again, it's the same thing we talked about coming in with the addition of Joseph Martinez. It's kind of convoluted what this is going to look like on the front line. He's playing off the left shoulder of Leo Campana. And the idea is, okay, Messi gets to wander and do what he wants off this right hand flank. But it's actually put Fadias in a very different position. More importantly, they've taken a player, David Ruiz, who was incredible during that stretch getting these attacks moving forward. They brought him deeper and moved him out of the run of play. Messi is put behind Martinez. Three minutes of the 90. That's all that's left. Will Inter Miami be able to force an extra half out? Here come those changes now. Cincinnati. And Acosta will be taken off.
position on the back line, and there's a little bit of lack of communication right there with Alvis Powell as to whether or not you're going to go with Al or Ray Gaddis, both who are primarily employed at the right wing back spot. They went a full 90 on the weekend in the 3-0 loss to the Columbus group. Hell was real for them. It seems like they're knocking on heaven's door tonight, though, the way that they play. for FC Cincinnati for 89 minutes and 30 seconds. Now the rest of the crowd joins them in the 90th minute. And they make it to their first U.S. Open Cup final. Came oh so close six years ago. Florida at the end, losing an extra time to the New York Red Bulls when they were still the second division team FC Cincinnati. Swing in there. This is on Cincinnati. Cincinnati with the Cranston. To be fair, class by Sergio Busquets, who recognizes that's just a warrior who's put in a shift and is trying to make a move for his team. Wonder if they should try and go vertically a little bit more. The way the game has gone, that's where they got their goal from. They've seen a couple of opportunities. My argument early on starts to move in a different direction because, yes, you only have the height of Leo Campana against a very tall back line. But now with the chances that you're taking, the players that are coming forward, especially as that trips off the dead ball spot, that's got to be the route that you attack more directly. Eight minutes of stoppage time. Messi sends in the free kick. He's out to Taylor. Busquets drives it in. And away by Powell. Alba searching for Messi. Now for a goal kick. up gave the thumbs up over to the bench keep the trainers off his teammates will help him work through it both teams are fresh out of subs remember we'll get a bonus one each if we do go to an additional 30 minutes but if you're out there you're not feeling up to it you have to come off and there's no replacement
Cincinnati. Angulo. Santos down. Ruiz. Three minutes to play. Messi scans the field. That's Santos. Messi still with it. Mispossessed cleanly. So many options tonight enter Miami. But direct up over the top has been a conversation that we've had over and over again. And how do you attack it? That's the back post run. Ray Gaddis doesn't drift over, doesn't try and give him help on the backside. And instead, Alvis Powell, we said when they made this change, the immediate move, there was an issue on the back post run. Three separate times from Leo Campana. This one at the death of this game to extend the hope and dream of a double for Inter Miami a little bit further. How many players on the planet or the history of this planet play that ball that Messi just did at this stage of the game? He might not be the only one, but it's a very, very short list. They were trying to go on their own, and they were trying to tap themselves, maybe look to something to the outside instead. Look, it's just vision. He sees it. It's on the backside. He's got a mismatch again. We had it on the first goal from the set piece. You get it open on a play, and we're back to score one. Eight minutes have come and gone. At the liberty of Joey Dickerson now for the full-time whistle. We are destined for 30 more minutes, barring something drastic here now. toll comes in because that is a game where FC Cincinnati was the aggressor. They were the leader all night long. Felt like they had it in their back pocket. And if you give them enough, we said this at the beginning of the game, if you allow Inter Miami to get on the ball, they are going to find one special moment if they've proven anything. And now eight games, seven in League's Cup, 
one in open cup. Was that whether from Busquets or from Messi? Anybody up top in that conversation? Second half saw plenty of goals. It had what the first half lacked. There weren't many chances to speak of in the first 45. And it ends up with three goals in the second half. Inter Miami coming down from 2 0. Here's how it looked. They're going to feel bad for themselves, FC Cincinnati, because the way that the goal plays itself out was on all night long. Combination play certainly struggled at the beginning. They tried to play to the outside, it didn't work. So Utro Costa says, you know what? I'm going to chase this shape myself. Pulls himself out wide. Goes 1v1. Beautiful live and give a go. Off Bupenza up top. And the opening goal for FC Cincinnati. They're off and running. And from that point on, it just was Inter Miami trying to work themselves back in. They couldn't do it in the first half, and they almost went down by a second goal. Bupenza on flag for offside. We've discussed at length how aggressive the back line is, and that's just a really good job by Nick Haglin stepping up into that space. It's a gray area that can be a concern for a center back, but he wins the tackle perfectly. You play off your big target nine up top, and Brandon Vasquez repays the favor on the ball to the top of the 18, 2-0. From there, everything going well. Then the trio of subs for Inter-Miami, it completely changed the game. It, it's really your own demise came from FC Cincinnati because you don't have to make the challenge down in the quarter if you're Adias. You certainly have the wrong mark here when you're matched up on Leo Campana on the back post run by Alvaro Varel. You give them a gift, they make you pay. It's 2-1, and then almost on cue. We said, if you're going to get back in this, how can you not go direct back over the top? Calls answered by Lionel Messi. Two headers on the night for Leo Campana. And the extension, 30 more minutes of football to get to a final. You could feel the air just sucked out of this crowd in Cincinnati after that second goal went in for Inter Miami. I've been in this situation where you are the better team all night long. You have the lead and this nagging opponent on the other side of the field. They just will not go away no matter what you do. Friendly reminder, two goals called back, plenty of opportunities wasted. And so you get snake bitten at the end. Everything right now is about mental tenacity for these guys because momentum firmly in favor of the visitors and Inter Miami. They don't care that they didn't play well. They don't care that Lionel Messi has had an off night. All they care is they've got an opportunity now with 30 minutes to go, two 15s, to go and chase this dream a little further. Conversely, other side, Pat Noonan, FC Cincinnati, head up, stay positive, body posture, talk to each other, work yourselves through the opening five minutes here, that's going to be the most crucial. You cannot allow this game to get away from you like we saw at the tail end of it. The aggression that we saw for 90% of this match has to ring true in the opening five minutes for FC Cincinnati to maintain what they're able to do for really the entirety of the match. Important point to remember with the roster rules in Open Cup, there are only six outfield players on each bench. All five subs were used by both teams in the 90 minutes, and that includes Cincinnati having taken off Brendan Vasquez, having taken off Lucho Acosta, having gone defensive to try and shield the victory, which they couldn't do, and now they have to get through these next 30 minutes with only Brett Halsey available on the bench. Well, you nailed it, too, and what's interesting to me is the reason you can't make the change for Brett Halsey to Avro Barrel, Halsey can't play in the interior. It's something that he experienced at the University of Virginia playing at the outside right back spot where they would invert him. But they primarily used him out on that left-hand flank. Ariel gives you a different option on the inside, but he was laboring towards the end of that 90-minute tenure. And the man who made everything possible and Leo Campana. No curtain call necessary. He's done. Kravatsky certainly an attacking option to help them chase this game. You would imagine this is going to push. Facundo Farias a little bit higher to get Kramoski comfortable in the interior and regain the midfield argument for Inter Miami. Underway now in extra time for a while. It didn't seem like we'd get here. Then Messi and Campana happen. Good to have you with us still alongside the ex-German pro Devin Kerr. I'm Joe Malpa. 108th edition of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Here we are in the semifinal, 35 days away from the final. Salt Lake is visiting the Houston Dynamo. They kick off in only 20 minutes. 
So that game will be underway before this game even ends. Concussion sub or anything of the sort. They only have one other player on the bench anyway, and it's the backup goalkeeper, CJ Dos Santos. So they are fresh out. Only Brett Halsey remains on the bench for FC Cincinnati among outfield players, and they also only have one sub remaining. Because of the lack of legs for Abro Mariel, look how high they've had to push him in so that you can drop Yuya Tubo into the midfield and help out Marco Angulo and Wobodo. Wobodo will be that central piece. He's not really going to vary side to side. It changes the dynamic midfield-wise, especially with the departure of Lucho Acosta. Now, Wobodo, he's got to sit in the middle and hold because you don't really have that presence up top to drop down in and help you defensively. It's also a concern. You start to counter. Most of those counters were coming off of the magical right foot of Lucho Acosta. That option's gone. I don't know if this is oversimplifying it, but is this just a case of... Either Inter Miami wins it in 120, or we go to penalties. No. no. The amount of space that Inter Miami has been willing to concede, there are going to be chances there. The real question is going to be, can you get the timing right with Sergio Santos up top? Because he's been a little bit off. You know, twice getting it behind, once that ended up into the back of the net. I would imagine if they are able to break the deadlock that has been quite some time, it'll be direct over the top on the counter. Alba, toward goal. Second time in this tournament that FC Cincinnati have had to deal with a late back back-breaking blow. Came against New York Red Bulls back in the round of 16. They conceded 90 plus two. That went one to one, then through the penalties. Officially tonight, the backbreaker came at 90 plus seven. Kramaski throw. Joseph Martinez. He's been waiting for his moment. He finally has it. Inter Miami. who gives it away and Matt Biasco just can't recover fast enough. That's beautiful vision by Joseph Martinez and everything that was the product on their own demise tonight comes back to bite the opposition on the other end. Diagonal running behind, no help from Alvis Powell and the breakthrough for Joseph Martinez that has been coming and hasn't been kind in 2023. But all that's behind them, Miami out in front. Open Cup goal for Joseph Martinez, who helped hoist the trophy in Atlanta in 2019. Farias. Romano goes down. For Cincinnati, now what? We just talked about one of the biggest issues you're going to have is you don't have a compliment onto the front line. You're going to have to come from a deeper line zone like you, Yakubo. You're gonna have to come deep. So we said Wobodo is gonna be the rock in the midfield, right? Well, now all of a sudden you're looking around and you're going, you, Yakubo, Marco Angulo, where's the help? That's gonna be the real compliment here. If you can get help up top, Santos is not gonna be able to do it on his own. Miami will become more reserved, but you're gonna need more support from those deeper line positions or pressure on the midfield. Yakubo's corner. It did go out before it came back in. And that's maybe what you have to look for as well. Set pieces if you're Cincinnati to get that goal back. Does it come here? I would also say on the other side, 
you've seen it all. One of the biggest things we saw from Inter Miami throughout their League's Cup title run, they didn't really back off. They, they never really sat back and said, okay, we've got our lead, we've got our comeback, whatever you want to call it. Certainly different argument tonight in terms of the comeback conversation. But they got out in front and they stayed out in front because their foot stayed down on the gas pedal. of this crowd at TQL Stadium at all times. One of the best atmospheres and environments in all of MLS. You could have heard a pin drop twice tonight when Campana tied it. And then just a few moments later in terms of game time when Joseph Martinez put Inter Miami ahead 3-2. So much of the attention, deservedly so, on Messi. Granted, he has two assists tonight. This is the first time that so far since he's joined Inter Miami, he hasn't been on the score sheet yet. There's still time, but it's the supporting cast. It's Campana twice. It's Martinez once. Well, it's that world class talk as well because it hasn't been his night, right? The game hasn't been kind to Lionel Messi, and yet all you need is a brief flash. And they caught lightning in a bottle twice off of his magical left foot. Football's different, Joe. It, it pushes you mentally to different places so that even when all the tactics are thrown out the window, you find a way to persevere through and get that one special moment to help your team. Kubal, Baiano goes down, stumbling. Played wide now for Gaddis, deflected. No real decision to be made here because it's a great recovery defensively. The turnover, but as quick as they come, look at all the pink jerseys. Himself back. Robert Taylor applies the pressure. You got Noah Allen on the back post. David Ruiz at the penalty mark. There's nowhere for Gattis to put that ball. You can play it across and hit it with hope. But the best you're gonna get is a deflection that can bounce kindly. Well, that's certainly how the first goal played itself out. stretch for FC Cincinnati all competitions this year 15 0 and 3 it's gonna go down as another tie tonight officially 15 0 and 4 but unless they come back and celebrate an extra time or penalty victory at the end of the night that run of unbeaten play at home is gonna feel hollow up top for FC Cincinnati. Five minutes remaining of this first half of extra time. How's that header, by the way? About 90 
seconds ago by Busquets in the box. Seven players around him, including his own, just plucking it out of midair. That's a guy who, if you look at him, yeah, he's got 865 appearances in his career through club and country. Just so calmly taken down. Void of the moment. Does not care. Calmness, class, everything about him. Barcelona, Spain, Champions League, La Liga, World Cup, you name it. He's been there, done it all, done it with that class and calmness. And has become his trademark. Cincinnati. They're chasing this game, but energy levels depleted. Only one sub remaining. With Brett Halsey, there's not a natural attacking fit. So when do you have to come out of your shell a bit more? When do you have to show the urgency? Still, of course, a couple minutes of this extra time and another 15 to go. Yuya Kubo. Santi Arias. Wobero. Sequence from FC Cincinnati and a disgruntled player in body out on the top of the 18, but it's really the only angle that he has to get this ball back across. There's a ton of jerseys right at the top of the 18, but that's a real good look at it. Everybody's marked up. You don't have the ability if you're Haglin to get this back across. You have to bring it direct across the six. But Drake Callender right there to collect. Alvis Powell again with the fresh legs driving, looking for Santos. Cook into the start of the 2023 MLS season, and how oh, how does he not get on the end of this? You've only got one thing to do, and it's push that body, the mind, and your frame as hard as possible to reach the top of the six. That ball's only going to one place. position up next to the torso everybody in the stadium erupting that they feel like this is a penalty but the ball's right up against the body that's a very difficult decision to make if you point to the spot i don't see it and they just confirmed corner joey dickerson it's thrown out the VAL official pointed to the corner says play on yuya kubo drops in another good ball
show any number on the board for extra times in this stoppage time period. So that might be it here when Callender puts it back into play. Joey Dickerson just trying to ask Callender to play the ball in because he knows he's blowing the whistle, and there it is. So through the first half of extra time, Victor Miami now ahead by a goal, courtesy of Joseph Martinez. Well, the belief's been restored, though, if you're an FC Cincinnati fan. And interestingly enough, by the way, just a little direction pointing down to the corner for Brett Halsey to come over and have a conversation with the coaching staff, but they're fighting back. Inter Miami starting to go into a little bit of a shell. Desperation football at times. This is what happens when you get into cup style football. The format, you feel like the job's done. You get back on your heels and you get away from the success that got you back into this game. They struggled. They were down 2 0. But the fight back, they get one from Campana from a dead ball situation and some kind of ridiculous ball spread to the back post. That sees Leo Campana just dripped right up underneath it. 90 plus 7. We were only playing 8. 60 seconds voided. 2 2 and into extra time. And it didn't take long into extra time. Only three minutes before Joseph Martinez gave into Miami the lead. Matt Miaska was irate at the fact that nobody gets on the end of that ball, but that's on him. He played it to the wrong spot, and then he doesn't recover quick enough. Joseph Martinez is always going to win the argument when you're talking a foot race in behind. I don't care who's on the back line. He's going to beat you, but he catches the angle just right. Beautiful ball slipped through, and into Miami out in front. And back to a moment ago when the crowd had that penalty shout. You can't fault them. They're desperate right now for anything. They're trying to find any way back into this game after it was just taken from them at the last moment by Messi and Martinez and Campana and crew. Well, think about it this way. For a team that emotionally struggled for the better portion of 20 minutes, you got a moment that got everybody else around you to believe that there is still an opportunity here because that was lacking for quite some time. They got out 2 nothing, and they just kind of sat there thinking, you know what, our job is done. But that wasn't the case. And so in that absence, moments like that can actually help the team band around themselves. And Pat Noonan's going to be sitting there going, look, there is a chink in the armor. They are fallible. We can beat this team. Forget about the fact that you were up 2-0 and you let that slip. You got 15 minutes to go back and chase this game and get back into the conversation of being a U.S. Open Cup finalist. And it's messy right now, gathering everybody huddled, giving them the pep talk as they take the field once again. Yedlin's won it. Uyoa's won it. Martinez has won it. The rest of this group wants to win it. We're 15 minutes away from reaching the final. September 27th against either Rail Salt Lake or the Houston Dynamo. That match is about to kick off right now in Houston. A Houston victory. We mean into Miami should they hold on post the final Real Salt Lake victory means well, Miami travels We've played 105 we'll play 15 more it's Inter Miami 3 FC Cincinnati 2 Brett Halsey came on for Barreal Neither team has a sub remaining Changes things on the front line for FC Cincinnati because Ray Gattis now comes deeper into the center back spot. Next to Miazga and Hagelin, you switch Alvis out of the other side. But what that does going forward is now you've got Adias as that main option. What they're trying to do is use the width of the field to their advantage with all the wing backs in pace. Stretch the field on the outside. If you can slip. Now of being done in for a fourth. 
City had some venom in that attack as he went forward. Both of these teams have left everything out there. Stands over it. They don't look like they're in any rush to get this board. Busquets. Now it's wide for Taylor. twice losing two finals in the Open Cup both with Philly one of those times came in penalties he converted his and lost it after nine rounds of penalties and so close again tonight to making a final only for the time being he had it wrestled away yeah, they've actually changed just a little bit again a little tweak on the inside I talked about using the width of the field Primarily gone into a four, which pushes Gaddis into a more natural marking back position. It's inverting just a tiny touch with Brent Halsey. Basically, you pivot on the left, you get Gaddis and Halsey. Same thing on the right side when you rotate through Alvis Powell and Adias, and you just kind of seesaw back and forth. Alvis Powell picked up a yellow card. for a moment he came out of retirement to try and chase title or two or open cup or an MLS play relationship with Pat Noonan and Chris Albright for a long career he had Philadelphia Gaddis nine years there now nine minutes to go every step of the way just new tests for Inter Miami they've come back in games now Marias won't get there all the way back for Kent that's a difficult one to deal with they've come back in multiple games now but tonight on the road against Cincy Time for the first time. Remember, Elite's Cup. 
straight to penalties. But now physically and mentally having to deal with an extra 30 minutes. They continue to pass every test in terms of the results. If they can get through eight more minutes. This was really the spark for everything in the second half for Inter Miami and the youngsters. David Ruiz coming on now. His role has changed as they added Joseph Martinez. And really, the conversation up top was null and void until the breakthrough. Ruiz has been really deep, but smart move. Just using his positioning to his advantage. Coming up over the top. Adias in behind. Every single player feeling the effects right now. But what? 
is the aftershock of that foul. Because this is this is messy territory-ish. It's a little bit further out. You're looking right around 30 yards. Central location is going to be difficult for Alec Cannon goal. How many of you put the wall? And do you use that to your advantage if you're into Miami? Very difficult to say. We're going to take the ball away from Lionel Messi. But everybody's expecting you to hit it. Do you maybe go another route? At first, I thought it'd be closer as Ruiz was tumbling. Joey Dickerson brought it back to the initial contact. But again, look who we're talking about. He's done it twice already from direct free kicks for Inter Miami in seven games. Santos getting in behind you beat him continue to drag this run because two things are going to happen you go one-on-one -on -one with calendar yes the angle might start to lack a little bit but you force two decisions calendar positionally to challenge himself and on the back post run Noah Allen has to make a decision instead you've let Inter Miami off Halsey last minute of extra time are we headed to penalties or is there something tonight incredible for both of these teams you've seen a little bit of everything FC Cincinnati and how great they were all night long conceding their lead Miami battling back at the tail end to push this into the final 30 minutes and then the start that was very poor for Cincinnati coming off the back line Joseph Martinez, we said coming in, he was due. He hasn't scored in the open run of play since the addition of Lionel Messi up top. Finally, repays the favor. And Inter Miami, get out. But be careful what you wish for here because Inter Miami went into a shell. They got deeper and deeper. And the young man at Brett Halsey, he's been a bright spotlight coming in. The spark that started this comeback as he gets in on the diagonal. You're just going to one place with this ball. It's ingrained in you as a kid over and over again. Cut it back to the penalty mark. Look for some support. You get the deflection, and you get Yuya Kubo cooking for the third of the night. 
No strangers to penalties recently into Miami. Needed them against FC Dallas after a 4-4 finish in League's Cup. Needed them against Nashville after a 1-1 finish in League's Cup to lift the trophy. Needed again tonight after a 3-3 finish against Cincy in the Open Cup. And this is a very interesting situation right here. You've got an Inter-Miami team that's probably going to feel a little bit defeated because they let this slip away just like FC Cincinnati did. They were spread out. Tata Martino was on the sideline having a conversation. The players looking for any sort of support that they can get going forward. That wasn't the case for Cincinnati. They've all been together the entire time. And some really interesting studies behind the scenes about what this five-minute window looks like from the whistle until you all walk to the center circle and the first one points to the spot. How do you best utilize that? Most managers will tell you this is a mind game right now. Who wants to be involved? Who feels comfortable taking one of the loneliest walks in sports. It's one of the most difficult things to do. Do you feel like you have the legs? Do you feel mentally capable? And what sort of confidence is behind you? Two different looks for two different teams, both searching the same outcome. If you're into Miami, you're confident maybe because you just won two shootouts in the last couple of weeks. If you're Cincinnati, you feel like you've got nothing to lose right now. After battling back in extra time. They're 2 and 1 all time in U.S. Open Cup penalties. They beat Chicago Fire in 2017 on the amazing run that was when they were still in USL Championship, the second division of the United States that saw them go all the way to a semifinal. 2018 was a Minnesota loss. And then earlier this year, on the road at Red Bull. They were able to take them down and continue on this Majestic Cup run. It has been a seesaw affair back and forth all night. That is now out of the hands of the managers. You've done everything you can. Hope, wink, a prayer. You do whatever you want and hope that in about five minutes time, you come out on top. The remnants of dark gray and black in the head of hair of Tata Martino. Get close to white with the way these last couple of weeks have gone. After the coin tosses, they'll be kicking away from the supporter section. And Long Bailey is special. Let's be real. This whole stadium is a supporter section for FC Cincinnati. Outstanding all night. And just waiting for a reason to now celebrate at the end. You boys keep yourself in check, stay on your line, and we're going out for pizza afterwards. I'm sure that's exactly what's going on right now. Who brought the orange slices? Off the skyline, chilly after this, if you're in this crowd for Cincinnati. Local delicacy. And it will be Cincinnati shooting first. Yuya Kubo, who sent this game the penalties, gets a hero's ovation as he makes a long walk. fan favorite keeps giving them moments and he produce another Kubo against calendar to start things off Kubo gets it in barely but he does as calendar gets his right not the same sort of hope that we saw from Drake calendar in game he sniffs this the right direction with an explosion just isn't there. Just about placement for you, Yakubo. No surprise, it's Messi stepping up for the first as he did each time in the League's Cup. He's made his last five penalties overall. He made a big one in Qatar about nine months ago as well. A couple of big ones there.
similar to what we saw from you, Yakubo. Just technique, little hesitation, that little skip to on top. And Alakan knows it. One of the best to ever grace this game with his presence. Keeps him even. Santiago Aria steps up now. One of the few who's played against Messi on the field tonight for Cincy previously. Adias, Tom, and he makes it two to one. I was with Drake Callender on this one. I thought he was going the other direction. Watch his hips just at the tail end. Just opens up enough. Thought he was going to come back across it, but well done by Adias. Just pivots to the outside, uses the momentum, picks out the far corner. That's a well-taken penalty. Now it's Facundo Farias, one of the three U-22 signings. One of the MLS roster rules for Inter-Miami. Turns 21 in five days' time. Tonight making his club debut. What a moment this is. Santos will be next. He had a couple of opportunities after coming on for Cincinnati to score in either regular time or extra time. And now he'll have a chance as he's handed the ball by Alacan. A few moments maybe that Santos regrets from extra time or regular time where he could have been the difference maker, could have given a two-goal lead, could have made it 4-3. Now from the spot. slow slow and you get in such close proximity to the ball you can lean back too much not the case here grab a laser pointer and pick out that upper corner you couldn't get it any better 19 year old David Ruiz has taken only two penalties in his career the two shootouts they had in League's Cup scored both of them started at the U-20 World Cup for Honduras a couple months ago. Scored a penalty there as well. Ruiz scores! It's incredible how different the decibels are once this hits the back of the net, right? It's to be fair, not the best of pens. He's just playing a mind game the entire time, staring down the goalkeeper. Can't saw it. He just hopped up off the deck and couldn't put his feet fast enough to come back over to the left side. And now it's Matt Miazga giving the captain's armband after Acosta subbed off. Miazga, the 28-year-old from Clifton, New Jersey, keeps it going for Cincy. scenes in what's probably the second best penalty of the night next to Sergio Santos and Matt Miazga. He's not lacking confidence, is he? Just comes right across the ball down into the bottom corner. He set the stage for Joseph Martinez, who with this team out in front, can he keep pace? Martinez has made his last five penalties. Scored a couple from the run of play after he was given the ball by Leo Messi. Scored already tonight in extra time. Martinez, a stutter step, and he puts it in. Four for four from both sides. Who will blink first now? Sudden death. early here too and he's just slow every single time he feels like he's headed in the right way he kind of jumps the other way and that little stutter it's the third time consecutively that we've seen him question himself it's almost like he's trying to goat the player going one way he gets what he wants but then isn't able to follow pursuit those two teammates winning the open cup in 2019 for atlanta now it's hagland 
in the fifth round. scored the winning penalty when they beat FC Dallas in the shootout in League's Cup. It's a bad penalty from Nick Haglund. He telegraphs it the entire way. He comes straight onto it. Doesn't lead himself the opportunity to go the other way. He knows it. Just a poorly struck penalty that is very easy to collect for Drake Callender and set the stage for the youngster. Where have we seen this before? Just today, named on the provisional roster for the U.S. men's national team in the next stretch of friendlies they play. To send them to the final, Benha Klamaski! Inter Miami will play for the Open Cup trophy! A cabinet that was empty. Very early in the existence still of this club, starting in 2020. Messi comes in, Busquets comes in, Alba comes in. All reinforcements as well. They put the first trophy in that cabinet on Saturday, and in 35 days, they'll try to add another. necessarily say it's a storybook ending right because there's still another chapter left to be written for Inter Miami and into the Open Cup final. You know Messi, he's human. He had himself a night that certainly did not account for the best of performances however still two assists, still the result they were looking for. Character is not going to be a question for this team moving forward. They were down, certainly poor throughout about 85 to 90 percent of this match and yet from a set piece opportunity from a recycled ball from the corner and then an open run of play from joseph martinez they got themselves into it they got the lead they got into penalties and they knew they've known the entire time that one of the best to ever do it just gives you that little added something you go to benami kramaski 12 yards out the bottom corner, five straight for Inter Miami into the back of the net to beat Alakan. 90 minute beckons. Who will be the opponent? That game is underway. Houston Dynamo, Real Salt Lake scoreless through 20 minutes. If it's Houston who wins, it'll be Miami who hosts. If Real Salt Lake wins, they will host. What a game this was from beginning to end. A crowd that will go home feeling unfulfilled six years after they stumbled in the semifinal of this same tournament. They have a lot to look forward to still in MLS. They are still in first place above everybody else. And Inter Miami will play for the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup trophy next month.
Definitivamente la actitud, el espíritu que tenemos, la verdad que luchamos hasta el final y gracias a Dios pudimos pasar a la final, que es una oportunidad más para conseguir otra copa. La victoria de esta noche lleva el récord de Miami a, a ocho partidos ganados y la oportunidad de ganar otro trofeo. ¿Qué significa esta oportunidad para ti? Oh, como te digo, muy feliz, muy feliz porque hace poco estábamos eh, abajo en la tabla y ahorita tenemos un título y tenemos la posibilidad de ganar otro. Así que feliz, feliz por el equipo, feliz por, por el desempeño de cada uno y la actitud, sobre todo, sobre todas las cosas. ¿Qué, se, ¿Qué dice eso sobre el equipo? Que nunca tenemos que bajar la cabeza. Eh, esto era de 90 minutos, 130 minutos. Teníamos que saber que esto era difícil. Ellos en casa son muy difíciles, por eso son el primero en, en, en la liga. Y bueno, nos tocó ir a nosotros la final y, y no tenemos que continuar con esa forma. La victoria de esta noche lleva el récord de Miami a ocho partidos ganados sin perder y la oportunidad de ganar un segundo trofeo. ¿Qué significa esta oportunidad para usted? Desde que hubo muchos cambios sabíamos que era una nueva oportunidad para todo el mundo. Era un nuevo aire, entonces tenemos que, que seguir de la misma forma. Lo que pasó hace, hace días ya para nosotros terminó. Ahora enfocarnos en lo que va a ser el sábado. Look at the full-time highlights from what was an epic match, one that will go down in history as probably one of the best semifinals in the 108-year history of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Took it to penalties. It was 3-3 getting there. That's where we live it all. Well, it's been three hours and five minutes since the beginning of this match, and Joseph Dickerson gets us on our way. Malucho Acosta was the one who opened the account tonight for FC Cincinnati. Just well worked from the outside. Gets some help on the flick on, gets some help from Kamal Miller, gets some help from the post, and it's 1 nothing. FC Cincinnati. The most dangerous man on the pitch on the attacking side shines bright once again, and they get their lead. Everything was going their way in the early stages, and it stayed that way into the beginning of the second half. Then, when Brendan Vasquez was able to go on and make it 2 0. I just gave them so much credit for their willingness to sit at times very deep and allow this attack to come forward because they had so many numbers defensively but it gave you a good look behind at the amount of space that they had to work with if they could move quickly and efficiently the majority of the first half they could not but that all changed in the 53rd minute you play off Vasquez you play through the channel and you play to the hope that the game could be over and they made it two to nothing but there was still a lot of work left to be done. It's a terrible foul in the corner. It's a beautiful ball from Lionel Messi. Stop me if you've heard this before, as he whips this in, and Leo Campana gets them back to within one. I won't stop you because you're about to say it again. Magic. Just special moments from special players, and they were anemic at times on the attacking front. Kept saying over and over again, if you weren't going to use the width, you had to go direct, specifically the aerial route. They do it in back-to-back -back fashion. 68th minute, 97th minute, and we're headed for extra time. In the extra time, it didn't take long. Three minutes for Joseph Martinez to give Inter-Miami its first lead of the night. How good has been, I mean, Kermoski been, though, this young man who is making his way through the national ranks that has quickly become a fan favorite, will live in cult lore for this ball that he plays through to Joseph Martinez. Ten games running. He did not have a goal in the open run of play. He was due, relationships lacking, goals were not. 3-2, Inter-Miami. 
when it seemed like since he was left for dead out of gas, that's when Yuya Kubo stepped up when they needed him most. This felt like it was coming, though, because Inter-Miami, we talked about them being an aggressor. The entirety of their League's Cup tournament title run, they had been the one who had the front foot one after another, even with the lead. They didn't. They sat back. They allowed FC Cincinnati to get back into it. Yuya Kubo was cooking. It's 3-3. It's penalties. It's a poor one from Nick Haglin. An advantage, Inter-Miami. Ben Hakanamaski then would win it. For the second time in his young career, winning a shootout for Inter Miami. They struggled, to be fair. Alicante did in goal from the penalty mark tonight and just never really was able to gain any sort of momentum in goal. Couldn't play the mind games, couldn't chase the game. Goals given up for sure. Thought maybe there would be some retribution at the tail end of it. But as we've seen already tonight and in previous looks within this squad, Inter Miami, Benjamin Kromoski, and the belief that anything is possible. Memorable night. For everybody here, whether it's a good memory for Inter Miami fans and players and staff, or bad memory for the faithful supporters of FC Cincinnati at TQL Stadium, it's Inter Miami who will play for the Open Cup trophy next month, September 27th. Thank you for joining us tonight. The crew that makes this possible, my broadcast partner Devin Kerr. I'm Joe Malfa saying good night from Cincinnati, Ohio. Inter Miami is through. that.